Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. That breaking news is the manhunt that is underway right now at Central Michigan University and in Mount Pleasant. Breaking information just coming in after two parents are killed on campus and police say it was their son who pulled the trigger. Right now, the entire CMU campus is on lockdown as police search for a student. And here we should have a, all have a good close look at this picture. This is James Eric Davis Jr., 19 years old, a native of the Chicago area, and the active manhunt is on for him at this hour. Police say Davis shot and killed both of his parents inside a dorm at Campbell Hall this morning. Campbell Hall is in an area known as the Towers Complex. We're covering a number of angles on this story. Larry Spruill is on campus talking to the parents who, like the students' parents, were coming to pick their kids up for spring break. But let's start with Sean Lay, who's in Mount Pleasant, with more on the manhunt. Sean. Intense manhunt. Let me walk everyone through it. Campbell Hall, about a half mile into campus this way. We are on the northwest side of campus and off campus, where this was the focus all day long of a very intense manhunt. Door to door car to car, but tonight that trail has gone cold. We know that the calm that is Central Michigan University was shattered this morning. The unthinkable happening, a double homicide inside a crowded dorm room. The suspected gunman we have learned is a CMU student. His name is James Eric Davis Jr. The victims, Davis's own mother and father. James Eric Davis Sr., who was a beloved police officer in the town of Bellwood, Illinois. His chief telling us this tragedy will severely impact his department. And Davis's own mother, Diva Davis, a breast cancer survivor. The suspect is still at large. Davis Jr. running after the shooting, dropping clothing around railroad tracks just off of campus. The campus and entire town of Mount Pleasant on lockdown. Dads like David Fountain rushing here to make sure his daughter McKenna was okay. I've been in contact with her back and forth with texting and phone calls and just told her to stay put in place, do exactly what the officers say to do. And uh, I'll be, I'm just on the outside here. So when everything's all clear, then I'll come in and get her. Police, canines, MSP chopper, and federal agents all searching for the 19-year-old going car to car, apartment to apartment, right where Haley Sari lives with her roommate. Me and my roommate were hiding in the bathroom for a while, though, because we saw someone outside our window, but we were just pretty much sitting there for, like, hours. Reaction and heartbreak for these parents pouring in here. A state rep from Illinois, Chris Welch, tweeting, the shooting at Central Michigan University today strikes close to home. A sad day in Bellwood and across the 7th District. My sincere condolences go out to the family of Bellwood Police Officer James Davis Sr. and his wife, who were shot and killed this morning. May they rest in peace. More with local students coming up at 6 o'clock, but let's get over to Larry Sproul. He's live on CMU's campus. Larry, it was stunning today, today to see the campus shut down and most of this town shut down. That's right, Sean. The campus was shut down for hours, and just within the last 45 minutes or so, police held a second police briefing addressing the media about this shooting that locked this campus down. They tell me that more than 100 officers are now searching for Davis. Friday afternoon, police and campus officials held a second press conference addressing the media about the shooting at Central Michigan University Friday morning. Police officers covered the campus of Central Michigan University Friday morning looking for this man, 19-year-old James Eric Davis Jr. Investigators say he shot and killed two people inside this dorm room Friday morning. Police say the two victims were not students. Minutes after the shooting, campus officials sent out this robocall to students, letting them know about what happened. The CMU Police Department is responding to a report of shots fired near the fourth floor area of Campbell Hall. As of now, the suspect is still out there and more than 100 officers are searching for Davis. Police say they had a run-in with him last night. We had CMU police that dealt with him last evening. And at some point in the evening, he was transported over to UVM Health Systems on Pickard for an evaluation, which we will believe was drug related. And I spoke with several students and parents tonight, and they tell me that they are worried and concerned because that suspect is still out there. Now, coming up tonight at 6, I asked the leaders here on this campus and the governor 
if this place were safe and if security me measures should be made. I'll have that story coming up tonight at 6. We're live at Central Michigan University tonight. Larry Sproul, Local 4. Larry, we heard that uh, father talking about having to wait for the all clear to be able to get to his daughter. Uh, are students being allowed to leave campus yet? Well, Devin, somewhat. The people here at the campus are still addressing strong safety measures and security measures. Students inside those dorm rooms right now are allowed to be escorted out to the hotel where those parents are, but they have to be escorted by police officers. Yeah. So they're taking from the campus here and taken to the hotel about a mile up the road, but they do have to be escorted by police. Devin? A lot of logistics to figure out in that. All right, Larry. Now, Governor Snyder is in Mount Pleasant at this hour. He talked about the tragedy on campus a short time ago at a news conference. Let's go ahead and take a listen. We are all rallying together. This is about how we support one another during challenging and terrible times, and that's what this was. This was a terrible incident. It was an isolated incident, but we had two people that were killed in a residence facility. That's traumatic um, to the students, to the parents, to the staff, to the faculty, in this case, the community, because this individual is still at large. Which is why we are continuously updating the story online as new information comes into the newsroom. You can find all the links and the new information on the homepage of clickondetroit.com. Well, all that uh, snow was pretty for a while, but it also made a complete mess for DTE crews. Yeah, just a huge mess at the height of the storm. Last night, 100,000 DTE customers lost power. This was as lines snapped and trees fell. Right now, DTE says that number down to 49,000. They expect to have 85% restored by about 11.30 tonight. Coco McAvoy is live tonight. And Coco, this is a real mess. Good afternoon to both of you. It really is a big mess. Some employees from DTE are working 16 hour shifts to restore the power. And most people we spoke to are very understanding. They understand that, of course, this is all happening because of the snowstorm last night, but still they're hoping for some relief soon. Royal Oak is one of many areas experiencing power outages this afternoon, and that means businesses are closed. Generators are on full blast. And residents like Alex Schneider are finding ways to kill time. Schneider's power went out last night. It's pretty scary because uh, it, it came with loud explosions. Turns out a transformer blew near his house, bringing down live wires and scorching the sidewalk. There was fire here lit up like a Christmas tree. Also lit up like a Christmas tree is the DTE energy outage map. All the heavy snow encased power lines and ice and eventually brought down tree limbs. So the sight of DTE workers in this Oak Park neighborhood is good news for this young boy and his next door neighbor. I'm happy that they're here. Erin Sullivan says a power line caught fire in her backyard. We just looked out my back window and the line was just on fire. So in the snow and it looked like a little bonfire in the back. Now crews are working to restore that line while also focusing on restoring power to other areas across Metro Detroit. Until then, residents are practicing patience and have one word to describe the experience so far. Cold. <laughs> So hopefully there's some warm weather coming soon as well. But again, the, the majority of customers, 85% of customers, will have their power restored by 1130 this evening, and the remainder will be restored by the end of the weekend. Reporting live this afternoon, I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4. All right, Coco, that has been a mess. And uh, think about the difference of yesterday versus today. Yesterday at 5, we couldn't see anything from this Windsor Sky Cam. It was covered with snow. Those snowflakes were yeah. huge, and the thaw is on now. There's a lot of snow, of course, to melt. Andrew's in for Ben tonight. And Andrew, do we have to worry about, you know, the possibility of refreezing at all? Well, you know, that is a concern as we get closer to sunset and afterward when temperatures get close to the freezing mark or below. Right now, temperatures are above freezing. We deserve a break, and I'm happy to bring the good news for you. Beautiful sunshine is still out there with 39 degrees over at City Airport, still hanging on to 40 degrees over in Livingston County. And in that area, in Brighton especially, eight inches of snow. Some places, even a bit more. Now, over in Romulus, official for Detroit, we received five inches, but eight and a half inches in Wixom, nearly eight and a half also for our friends over in White. Lake, uh, nearly eight and a half, nearly eight inches also in Ann Arbor. Above freezing in all four of our zones, it feels like it's around freezing, so you still want to bundle up. And temperatures tonight, as early as around 9, 10 o'clock this evening, get closer to 32 degrees. 
That's freezing and then go below freezing into the 20s overnight. Ramps, bridges, overpasses you got to watch out for. They tend to freeze first. We get above freezing again for tomorrow, but how high do those temperatures go? We'll talk about that and if any more sunshine comes back for Saturday and Sunday. All right, Andrew, uh, we're going to we got Mike Pence in town. We're going to check in on that in just a second, but we're going to take a quick break. And then we'll continue with Local 4 News at 5 in just a moment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I am not a new at six. You may have seen the news that the sinkhole lawsuit here in Frazier has been determined. But is it all done? Will the city of Stilling Heights appeal that decision? I'll let you know what they're thinking. All right, Nick, plus there's a new automaker in town and they're giving us an up close look at their brand new vehicle. See what Mahindra has come up with at six. As I mentioned heading into the break, Vice President Mike Pence in Detroit right now rallying Republicans and also talking about the tax cut. Mar McDonald is live at the book Cadillac and Mar, he was there to talk economics, but then started off on something else entirely. Sandra, he sure did. Take a look behind me. You can see the vice president just finished up his remarks. He's doing a little meet and greet right now and shaking some hands. But yes, he was here ostensibly to talk about economics. And he did talk about economics, but he started off his remarks by addressing the situation at Central Michigan University, as well as the issue of school safety across the country. Take a listen. School safety is now the top priority of the Trump administration. And I'll make you a promise, Michigan. Working with federal and state leaders, we're going to take strong action to strengthen background checks, to give our schools and law enforcement the resources and flexibility to keep our kids safe. And we're going to work to give families the tools they need to deal with those struggling with dangerous mental illness. Back here live, the vice president is going to remain here for a panel discussion with some of our congressional delegation. Um, I'll be back at six, Devin and Sandra, to talk to you about what the rest of his message was about. Talked about quite a bit, uh, including referencing Detroit automakers. So stand by, see you back at six. We're live at the Western Book Cadillac. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. All right, thank you, Mara. We'll see you at six. Devin? Next story is difficult to watch. A man pulling out of his driveway shot several times at point blank range. All of this happening as a home security camera is rolling. A Detroit police releasing this video though because they need to identify the man who was firing shots into that pickup. Amazingly, the man somehow survived. Jason Colthorpe has more from the east side. It was noon on February 19th on a day a lot like this when the homeowner here got in his pickup to back out of his driveway. What he didn't see was a man coming at him with a gun and he didn't notice it until it was too late. The victim's home surveillance captures the terrifying scene. A man in a black Chevy Suburban charges the driver's side and fires multiple shots at point blank range. With the driver incapacitated, the truck jumps forward and slams back into the house. So right now, the family just praying, you know, they, everything coming all right. The 48 year old victim, whose first name is Ricky, lives in this house with his wife and has seven kids. He remains in the hospital in critical condition. I was shocked about seeing it. You know, I, actually, I was kind of mad. Being that's my nephew, I wanted to do something. Ricky's uncle says both the family and the neighborhood are upset by this. We've been here since 76, and, and for this to happen, it just, and everybody know him. That's the killing part about it. it was, this is a close neighborhood. Everybody knows each other. Could have been a small caliber rifle or a large caliber pistol. Ron Parmenter saw it all go down from his second floor window next door. Yeah, I saw it, but I couldn't get my binoculars up in time to get to the license and everything, but the truck is one that I think hangs over on Marlboro. Family members don't want Ricky's full name out there and aren't saying what a possible motive might be, but a neighbor thinks it could be payback for testifying against the men in the black suburban. He don't mess with nobody. He take care of his family, he work and come home. That's what he do. Again, a description on that black Chevy Suburban. It has some duct tape on the side view mirror on the driver's side, a tail light out in the back. Neighbors think they'd seen it in the neighborhood. If you know anything about this case, call Detroit police. We're on the east side. Jason Coulter, Local 4. Yeah, that's the description of the Suburban. The gunman is described as being a black male, 35 to 40 years of age, about 5 feet 7 inches tall with a thin build. And again, if you can help, you're urged to call police. 
The state of Michigan has announced Hamtramck has been released from receivership after improvements in its finances. The Treasury Department says city leadership will regain full control and be able to manage internal operations without any state oversight. The mayor of Hamtramck says the city is in a great position for solid growth in the future. Andrew's in for Ben, and we saw that really <laughs> wet, heavy snow, which is the kind of thing that brings down power lines, and brings down tree limbs. So many trees down yeah. everywhere today. Yeah. Well, thank goodness we had temperatures above freezing because a lot of that snow is now melting off of our power lines and off of our trees, which is good. We have temperatures now that are still above freezing, but watch for them to go below freezing as early as maybe 9, 10 o'clock later on this evening, maybe even a little bit earlier, depending on where you live. Definitely in the 20s tonight, no matter where you live, in any four of our zones. Here in the metro zone, mostly middle 40s, anywhere from 25 to 28 degrees right here in the city of Detroit, uh, the lower part of uh, Oakland County and southern Macomb County as well. Love to see the blue skies, though, right? Instead of those gray skies and all those big wet snowflakes that were falling. 39 degrees currently, wind chill of 32, so you have to dress as if it is freezing because that's how cold it feels if your skin is not protected. Still have a pretty brisk wind out there out of the northwest at around 12 miles per hour. Beautiful sight in the sky later on this evening. You'll be able to see Venus and Mercury bundle up when you take the kids out, get them hooked on astronomy just after 7 p.m. You'll see these two planets uh, about a half hour to 40 minutes after sunset, and sunset this evening evening is at 625. We're looking at 42 degrees currently for our friends in Macomb Township, still above freezing for our friends over in uh, Lapeer at 39 degrees, 37 over in Brighton, where eight inches of snow fell yesterday and last night. 39 again at Metro Airport, still hanging on to 40 degrees over in Dundee and 39 in Adrian. So everyone is seeing some thawing going on, whether you got three inches yesterday or whether you got eight or more inches. And those winds at around 10 to 15 miles per hour make it feel like it's below freezing, not only right here in the Motor City, but also where you live in areas outside the city, whether it's Mount Clemens with a wind chill of 29 or a wind chill of 32 over in Ann Arbor. But thank goodness high pressure is coming back. This dome of nice dry air, stable air means we'll see sunshine all day long for both Saturday and Sunday. Great car wash days and great days to recover after the snow we had yesterday, right? When we're looking at that, we're also looking at dry conditions as we go into Monday and temperatures go back above freezing shortly after sunrise on both days for your weekend. Same thing on Monday as well. So we're looking at 22 degrees overnight. Watch out for refreezing, rain Ramps, bridges, overpasses, they can be much trickier because they freeze earlier. And we're looking at winds out of the north, northwest at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sunset again this evening is at 625. During the day tomorrow, nothing but sunshine all day long. Great for any outdoor activities or just getting to and from services or whatever your activity is. 37 degrees at noon, more melting in the afternoon with a high temperature of 41. And sunrise tomorrow is at 705. Beautiful sunshine comes back on Sunday as well. So you've heard the taste of Troy uh, raising money for Boys and Girls Club of Troy over at the San Marino Club. 44 degrees for a high on your Sunday. Still dry heading back to work and back to school on Monday with a high of 45 degrees. The next chance of any rain or snow showers, and yes, it's still possible this time of year, next Tuesday and Wednesday. That's still a ways away, so it could change, but get ready for some wet or slippery weather to come back with temp temperatures in the 40s for highs, near freezing for lows, but sunshine returns by the end of next week. Thank goodness. We deserve a break. Yeah. yeah. And it is coming. It's already Yesterday here for today. It was like a practical joke, especially after what we had the day before. Yeah, That's true. We're looking good this weekend. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Andrew. Hey, Doc. Hey, guys. Well, the flu is finally showing signs of slowing down in some parts of the country. But what about right here in Michigan? Well, I'll have the latest on the local flu situation coming up. All right, Frank. But first, an Olympic champion taking her fight to court. What Ali Raisman is doing in the wake of the Larry Nassar abuse scandal. We'll have that next. And if you're just joining us, we are following breaking news from Central Michigan University, the campus on lockdown as the manhunt continues for 19 year old James Eric Davis Jr. Police say he shot and killed his parents inside Campbell Hall on the west side of campus this morning. He is considered armed and dangerous. Right now, the search is focused north of campus. Police are safely escorting students and staff out of the buildings. Of course, we'll continue to follow this story and bring you updates live on air and online at clickondetroit.com. We'll be right back. I want to be sure, though, to invite you to watch Flashpoint this Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We're putting together a special hour-long edition, Generation Under Fire. We'll tackle the question of school shootings and school security from a number of angles, talking to lawmakers, law enforcement, teachers, uh, mental health providers about what can be done. I hope you'll join us Sunday morning at 10. 
Two-time Olympian and American gymnast Allie Raisman is suing the U.S. Olympic Committee and USA Gymnastics. Raisman says both organizations knew or should have known about the sexual abuse committed by former team Dr. Larry Nasser. Nasser pleaded guilty to numerous counts of sexually abusing young athletes, some as young as 13 under the guise of medical treatment. He's been sentenced in a number of courts now. He will spend the rest of his life in prison. Across Michigan tonight, the Alpena Police Department has released a sketch of the possible armed man they say was seen on the grounds of Ella White Elementary School. It happened yesterday morning. Ella White and all the area schools were put on a lockdown just as a precaution. This was while investigators searched for a suspect. He was last seen wearing a blue colored hoodie. If you can help identify this man, call police. In Lansing, the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality is hoping to update the lead and copper rule. Some changes include lowering the acceptable amount of lead from 15 parts per billion to 10. They'll also require that cities know exactly where lead service lines are located and put in a plan to start replacing all the service lines over time. The updates were created to make sure a Flint water crisis doesn't happen again. New at 5:30. A massive storm barrels its way up the East Coast. Hundreds of flights canceled, and the worst of it hasn't even hit yet. President Trump says it's good for the American worker, but some experts say it could start an international trade war. I'm Blaine Alexander to break down the latest on the president's tariff announcement and what that means for you. A driver loses control and slams into a bus stop in downtown Detroit. Coming up, you'll hear from the driver about what caused this crash. Next. We begin here at 530 with an update on breaking news from Central Michigan University. Right now, police have shifted their search for a gunman north of campus. Police say James Eric Davis Jr. killed his parents in a dorm room at Campbell Hall this morning. CMU has been on lockdown since this morning, but police are working to get everyone out of the buildings and out of the classrooms. We are working uh, with CMU assets and state police do we do a slow, methodical removal of people from our residence halls and buildings? We are encouraging our faculty, staff, and students to wait till they are contacted by uniformed police. We will provide transportation. We have buses, and we're facilitating getting our students, staff, faculty out of our buildings. As the manhunt continues, we'll have a live update on campus on Local 4 News at 6. Also here at 530, blinded by the snow, a security camera catches a car slamming into a crowded bus stop at Wayne State. Three people were injured in that crash, and it could have been much worse. It happened late this morning on Woodward, right at Forest. Coco McAvoy has a look at what happened. This is all that remains after a driver lost control this morning and slammed into this bus stop. The corner of Woodward and Forest is now a cleanup site following a bad crash this morning. When it was like a movie, like the, the special effects in a movie, it was shattering. Photos and surveillance video show the moment the 78 year old man lost control and slammed his car into a bus stop. It was pretty scary. My first thought was just, oh my God, the people, are they okay? So Stop. we got out and Call checked on them. The roof collapsed and three people were rushed to the hospital. Oh, that, I really hate that. That really did a job on me. Albert Longmire was the man behind the wheel. I would listen to some music. And I would listen to <laughs> They want to able to press this spiritual. <laughs> spiritual. I don't guess he helped me very well. Longmire says the roof of his car was covered in snow and ice. And it slid over, boom. That over in front of the, around the windshield. The snow blocked his view and he crashed. It happened, it happened so fast. And it was just, all of a sudden it went. Dog like boom. Police are continuing to investigate while the victims recover from their injuries after the unexpected crash. So you heard the driver say that he had a lot of snow on and ice on top of the roof of his car. So the biggest message here is to make sure that you're cleaning your cars of all snow before you start driving. And actually, when the photographer of this story tweeted about this story, the Michigan State Police Department responded and commented saying how important it is to make sure that you have no ice or snow on the roof of your car because obviously bad crashes like this can happen and people can get injured. Back to you. Yeah, and Coco, how are those people? people doing tonight, those three people, are they expected to be okay? 
So the good news of this story is that the three victims, they are in stable condition right now. They were taken to this hospital here in temporary serious condition, but we are told by police that they are expected to be okay. All right, we will stay on top of it. Thank you so much, Coco. The North American International Auto Show, which is hosted right here in Detroit, might be undergoing a major change. Organizers are discussing the possibility of moving the show from January, where a lot of people like it, say it's the only thing in January, to October. The change could potentially happen as early as 2020. A spokesperson for the auto show confirmed a schedule change is being considered, but right now nothing is final. State Senator Burke Johnson has resigned after pleading guilty to conspiracy and theft crimes. He admitted to misusing taxpayer dollars by hiring a ghost employee to work in his legislative office. He allegedly paid that employee $23,000 for no work. He claims he did it because he borrowed money from a woman to pay his son's tuition and his property taxes, but couldn't back, uh, couldn't uh, pay her back. And just two days ago, rejected a plea deal that would have sent him to prison for up to a year. Right now he faces up to 12 years in federal prison. A 16 year old is in critical condition after the homeowner he was trying to rob shot him multiple times. The homeowner got a notification. His house was being burglarized. He tells police when he checked it out, two people were trying to break in and one of them pointed a gun at him. The homeowner is a CPL holder and returned fire, hitting that suspect three times. Police uh, say they recovered the suspect's gun and are still investigating. Well, what a difference a day makes. Yesterday at this time, we were looking <laughs> at all that snow, and now today we're just we're thawing out. And that's right. We have blue skies overhead. Temperatures are still above freezing, so a lot of melting going on, ladies and gentlemen. Look how much snow fell yesterday. Five inches over at the airport, so that's five inches for Detroit as well. That means uh, we're we also looked at five to eight inches across a good portion of the area from White Lake, nearly eight and a half inches, six and a half inches for our friends and neighbors over in Saline, between five and six inches. Also, Farmington Hills, Shelby Township over Macomb County, same deal. And what, uh, what Sandra, Jason, and Coco were talking about, very important. Even at this late hour, if you left your car out and you still haven't driven it yet, make sure it is completely clear and make sure you clear the headlights and taillights so you can see and be seen, especially as the sun is setting. And respect road crews that might be out there because we are expecting some refreezing tonight. I mean, right now it's above freezing. Look how gorgeous it is. Wonderful blue skies overhead, temperature seven degrees above freezing across all four of our zones at 39 degrees, but we'll get close to the freezing mark shortly after sunset. Sunset is, is just before 630. By 8 p.m., 9 p.m., we get closer to freezing, and then we're down into the 20s later on tonight. So some icy conditions could develop later on tonight, and also they may still be around when we wake up on Saturday morning. But Saturday afternoon, we're back above freezing. Any more sunshine to come? More on that and your seven-day forecast minutes away. All right, thank you, Andrew. Residents in Massachusetts bracing for an evacuation as floodwaters continue to rise there. The high water is the result of a massive storm. That storm slamming the East Coast, a system the National Weather Service is calling a life and death situation. Roughly 80 million people are in the storm's path. Forecasters say the storm already reached bomb cyclone status, which happens when there's a rapid dramatic drop in atmospheric pressure. More than 2,000 flights have already been canceled. Could an international trade war be on the horizon? President Trump's move to raise tariffs on imported steel and aluminum is being met with criticism from around the world and even within his own party. So what does that mean for you? Blaine Alexander has a closer look at the wide ranging effects. She's in Washington tonight. Hi, Blaine. Well, hello to you from Washington. President Trump says that this move would mean that other countries will stop taking advantage of America. But some experts say that it could also mean that you would end up footing the bill. President Trump defiantly defending his plan to put heavy tariffs on imported steel and aluminum, tweeting trade wars are good and easy to win. But the markets fear otherwise. Driving the Dow down again today. Dropping after the president's unexpected announcement. The tariffs intended to target China instead may hurt American allies, Canada, Brazil, South Korea and Mexico, which provide most of our imported steel. We are impressing upon the American administration uh, the unacceptable nature of these proposals that are going to hurt them uh, every bit as much as they will hurt us. The president insisting this is good for American jobs, but some of the sharp 
sharpest criticism coming from his own party. I think it's going to increase prices. It's going to hurt jobs. So what does this mean for you? Experts say expect a price hike on anything from cars to washing machines, even a can of soda. You drink Diet Cap Pepsi or Diet Coke? All the time. Okay, there you go. Me aluminum too. Cans, Me right? too. It's aluminum cans. So get ready for a gross up on the price. That's not good. The administration says that cost less than a penny per can. It doesn't mean anything. So all this hysteria is a lot to do about nothing. The tariffs will not be official until the president signs off next week. Some Republicans hoping that's enough time to talk him out of it. And today there is fear that China could retaliate by punishing some of America's biggest companies like Apple and Boeing. In Washington, Blaine Alexander, Local 4. Yeah, news of the tariffs aren't, isn't going over well on Wall Street very well today. Merrill Lynch downgraded U.S. Steel over this news, saying any benefit from the move would be limited. After more than a week of mourning and memorials, Reverend Billy Graham was laid to rest today at his library in Charlotte. President Trump, one of the 2,300 guests who attended the funeral this afternoon, the service was filled with traditions of Reverend Billy Graham's life. He loved the Bible. It governed how he lived, and it governed how he died. My father preached on heaven, told millions how to find heaven. He wrote a book on heaven, and today he's in heaven. The funeral was a celebration of his life and his calling. Followers say his message will live on forever. As the service ended, members of the Graham family stood at the exit, thanking the thousands of visitors for being there today. Graco recalling 36,000 high chairs today after several reports of children falling. Yeah, the, the high chairs are sold exclusively at Walmart and involve the table to table six in one high chairs. The recalled high chairs will have the model number 1969721. Graco says it's received about 38 reports of the high chairs rear legs falling out of position. If you have a recalled chair, stop using it. Call Graco for a free repair kit. On top of helping kids build fantastic sculptures, one company will now help them build a greener future. Lego is launching sustainable plant-based Lego pieces this year. Yeah, these are new pieces. They're green pieces made from sugarcane-based plastic and include leaves, bushes, and trees. The company says it's the first step in their $150 million plan to try and use sustainable materials in all of its products by the year 2030. Don't tell the kids it's made of sugar cane. It'll just one more They'll reason just to put them. it. Yeah, just one more <laughs> reason to throw it in their mouth. Uh, it's not a bird and definitely not a plane. Coming up new tonight, what experts are saying about this UFO sighting in the skies over Milwaukee. And take a look at this. Not supposed to happen this way. How one small mistake left a truck driver seriously injured. Hey, Doc. Hey guys, well the flu is finally showing signs of slowing down in some parts of the country, but what about here in Michigan? I'll have the latest on local flu cases coming up. All right, Doc, and our podcast about the missing Skelton Boys continues. Episode 6, A Journey into Amish Country, follows a story that John Skelton told investigators. He said many times Tanner, Alexander, and Andrew were given to the Amish. We asked the Amish if they would take three boys from a modern world. Do you remember seven years ago, the boys from Morency that went missing? Oh yeah, the small ones. If someone brought children here, would the Amish community, would they take them in? It could be, yeah. You can find Shattered Black Friday wherever podcasts are available. Subscribe and review today. On Jeopardy! at six. There won't be horse races at Northville Downs tomorrow because, well, they're missing something pretty important. Find out what new at six. Plus, it's happened again. A local teenager arrested for threatening classmates and now facing charges that could ruin his life. New at six, the strange statements police say this young man made that did not involve any sort of weapon. 
In good health tonight, the CDC says the flu is slowing down overall, but cases are still pretty widespread in 45 states, including Michigan. And sadly, 114 children have now died with the flu this season. Dr. Frank McGeorge is here with the very latest on our local flu situation. Well, Jason and Sandra, you know, the encouraging news is that most local hospitals and doctor's offices are reporting a decrease in flu activity this week, but flu numbers still remain high, so we're definitely not out of the woods yet. Here's what's going around where you live. In Wayne County, Dr. Sean Jayakar at St. John Hospital is still treating flu cases, but says it's slowing. He's also seeing stomach viruses. The CVS Minute Clinic in Wyandotte says flu continues, but colds and bacterial sinus infections are on the rise. Pink eye and strep throat also make the list. Moving to Oakland County, Dr. Kelly Levasseur at Beaumont Children's is treating kids with flu, strep throat, and bronchiolitis. That's an infection of the tiny airways that lead to the lungs. The CVS Minute Clinics report croup, ear infections, and sinus infections. Looking at Washtenaw County, the health department says flu continues to circulate at elevated levels, but confirmed cases and hospitalizations are decreasing. Doctors at U of M are still treating flu, but less of it. The latest round of ice brought lots of slip and fall injuries, especially in the mornings. Heading to Monroe County, ProMedica Monroe Regional is seeing flu cases and stomach viruses and RSV. Dr. Anthony Songo reports the flu is slowing at his office, but cases of rotavirus are popping up. Finally, in Macomb County, at McLaren Macomb, confirmed flu has started to decline, but stomach viruses are prevalent in young kids. Beaumont Dr. Parag Patel in Sterling Heights is seeing strep throat and RSV, and CVS Minute Clinics are treating pink eye and sinus infections. Now remember, we typically see flu cases well into April and sometimes even May. So if you develop symptoms, you should call your doctor right away. Of course. Is it too late for a shot? It's not too late, right? Well, no, it's pretty much too it's late. It's too late. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, there not, you go. We're, we're tailing down now. Okay. okay. All right. Thank sure. you so Thanks much, Doc.